Hey guys, what's up? I wanted to do a quick video about how to get duty cycles below 50% using the 555 timer. I know there's a lot of videos out there and a lot of tutorials about this, but uh, I followed just, well, what feels like all of them, and I wasn't able to get a good uh, understanding or a good circuit working. So I want to show what I did and hopefully that'll help some others out there uh, accomplish what they need to do. So so what we're going to want is uh, a stable operation. We want it to continually fluctuate between a high and a low. Uh, these formulas, formulas right here are uh, what's going to give you the high time, the low time, frequency, all that stuff. So um, uh, the high time, basically I'm just going to go over this real quick. Uh, the high time is determined by the time it takes to charge this capacitor. Jumping over to uh, my surface here so I can uh, write on this. So what we want is we want the charge time, uh, the time that it takes to go through RA and RB to be less than the time that it takes to discharge. And so since both of those have to go through RB, what we want is RB to be somehow greater than RA plus RB. So the way we do that is we make RB greater than RA plus RB. So on the schematic, basically all we have to do is add a diode that lets VCC bypass RB. So it charges very quickly if RA is low or if RA is zero, that's going to mean the charge time is almost instantaneous, which means T high is basically zero. But once it discharges, it has to go through RB because it can't go back around because of that uh, diode. So if RB is very high, that means the discharge time through pin 7 is going to be uh, much longer than the charge time uh, across RA. So that lets us get duty cycles below 50%. What does this mean for the schematic of the actual circuit or what your breadboard will look like? Well, VCC will still be connected to voltage. Uh, ground will still be connected to ground. Uh, reset is going to be, we want to tie that high. So that also goes uh, to VCC. Pin five, uh, you can leave open, but it's generally a good idea to uh, put a capacitor on that and link that to ground. So we're going to get pin five, put a capacitor on it, and put it to ground. So the discharge, as you can see on pin seven, is going to have RB between discharge and threshold. So discharge, is going to have RB between that and then discharge and VCC has RA between it. So RA connects to VCC, but we want to bypass RB going from basically pin seven to pin six. So we're also going to add I'm going to put this in blue here. So basically, uh, from pin 7 to 6, we want to put that diode going from 7 to 6. So uh, we're going to do this. Put that diode here. And that way we can bypass RB when we are charging the circuit and not when we are discharging it. Uh, there's also going to be a capacitor between uh, pin 6 and ground. So that will be pin six and ground. And depending on the size of this capacitor, uh, the larger it is, the greater the time, the smaller, the smaller the time. Uh, that goes 
Same with these uh, resistors. Uh, the greater the R, greater the time, less the resistance, the smaller the time. And uh, those that can be figured out with those formulas that I showed you earlier in the data sheet, um, which I will link in the description of this video. So what you'll also see is pin six and pin two are linked. So you're going to want to put a wire between those. Pin two is also connected to that uh, capacitor. Let's see, out. Out will be obviously your uh, PWM signal. So this will go to a, a transistor or um, whatever you're controlling. Looks like we've got everything hooked up. So to get a duty cycle below 50%, Basically, all you need to do is bypass RB. That allows the charge time to be extremely fast uh, if RA is low and discharge time to be long uh, if RB is high. So basically, what you would do is if you have a, let's say you have a, a potentiometer, this is 10, 8, 10, 7, 6, 5. So the way you would wire it up with a potentiometer, just to, just to be thorough, you would have, I'll just draw it like that. You're going to have uh, the voltage connected here. And this is going to be, uh, basically this top one is RA. This bottom one is RB. So you're going to have from there RA, goes into discharge, which is pin seven. It's connected there. And then you're going to have RB going from discharge to threshold, which is right here. And that's connected. So, uh, and then we want to bypass RB if we are going, uh, if we are charging. So charging is put a diode going from pin seven to pin six. So we totally cut this out of the circuit if we're charging. And then since, again, we can't go through the diode this way, it has to go through RB uh, to discharge. And so when RB is greater than RA, the duty cycle is less than 50 less than 50 percent so uh, i hope that helps i didn't uh, find anything that explained this uh, explicitly so i just wanted to do a quick video about it this is basically your uh your circuit right here just put that on your breadboard and you should get uh, a resulting uh circuit that can produce a duty cycle from zero to 100%. And uh, you don't have to go from just 50 to 100, like the data sheet shows you. So anyway, uh, I hope uh, you made it through all that. I kind of uh, just did this video on a whim. I didn't plan it out or anything. Uh, so I hope that helped. Be sure to uh, leave a comment if, uh, if it did help you. Um, if not, just go ahead and uh, hit that dislike button. But if you liked it, hit the like button. Um, it really helped me out. So anyway, thanks a lot and I will catch you guys later.